Yep, yep. Yeah, okay. Nick, I'm sorry to say that I got a minute. Yeah, no, you're thinking. Want to something? Guys? What? How many, how many pre meds in the lab? Okay, basically everyone, right? Okay. So today we're, we're working on esters, acids, and alcohol. Specifically, how to put an acid and an alcohol together to make an ester, and then how to take that ester apart again. Um, you'll be doing a Fischer esterification to make methyl benzoate, and then you'll be hydrolyzing it back into methanol and benzoic acid. So it's kind of an academic exercise. Methyl benzoate, it's a cool molecule, it smells nice, uh, a little bit commercially relevant, but there are other esters that are far more powerful in their chemistry, like this drug, Tamiflu. Anybody know what Tamiflu is for? Yeah, and the name's kind of a hint, isn't it? Right, Tamiflu, it's an antiviral. It's one of very few antivirals that are commercially available right now. And it works by inhibiting an enzyme that participates in cell adhesion. So the virus caps, it can't latch onto the cell and inject its RNA into the cell. So you start to get the flu, your doctor may prescribe Tamiflu. Now here's an interesting note about Tamiflu. This molecule right here does not inhibit viral adhesion to cells significantly. It doesn't work. But that's what's in the pill you swallow. Interesting. This molecule right here, it's called Olsetamivir carboxylate. I've drawn it as a carboxylic acid, but of course it's usually sold as a salt, so that's why it's called a carboxylate. This molecule, on the other hand, does inhibit the adhesion of viral capsids to cells. So why does your doctor give you Tamiflu instead of this Olsetamivir molecule? Well, there's a very good reason, actually. This is very effective against infections of uh, viral types, particularly influenza, but when you swallow it, only 5% of what you swallow gets from your GI tract into your bloodstream. You can't cross that barrier very well, because the lining of your stomach and your GI tract is very hydrophobic, and there's some pretty polar groups on here, especially that carboxylic acid. So this is effective, but you can't absorb it. Now, Tamiflu, on the other hand, you notice it's not carboxylic acid, it's an ethyl ester. So it's far less polar, which means that it's better getting absorbed into lipophilic or hydrophobic environments like the lining of your stomach and your GI tract. So 80% of what you swallow when you take a Tamiflu tablet gets into your bloodstream as this ethyl ester. Right? But that doesn't work against the virus. Fortunately, you have enzymes in your liver called esterases which break esters down into the corresponding acids using water, which you've got plenty of, right? So this is uptaken well, but doesn't work. This works, but isn't uptaken well. But your liver enzymes actually turn this into the functional molecule once it's crossed into your bloodstream. This is called a prodrug. Tamiflu is the ethyl ester of the active ingredient, so because it undergoes a chemical modification in your body, become active, we call it a prodrug. That is an ester hydrolysis reaction, isn't it? It's enzyme mediated, right? The ones that we do, we use either hydroxide for saponification or an acid catalyst for acid catalyzed excuse me, acid catalyzed hydrolysis, but it's the same basic concept. So if this is a hydrolysis reaction, what's the byproduct? Authority, please. And the alcohol, right? The byproduct of this reaction is ethanol. Okay, now before you get too excited about this, <laughs> the amount of ethanol produced in a therapeutic dose of Tamiflu is about one one thousandth of a beer worth of ethanol. So you've got to take a thousand Tamiflu tablets to get one drink worth of ethanol into your bloodstream. So if you're trying to get drunk with Tamiflu, intoxication is the least of your worries. You probably want to put liver failure a little bit higher on your list, right? But it does make a little bit of ethanol. So does it surprise you that they chose the ethyl ester over other ester? Why not make it propyl ester, isopropyl ester, t-butyl ester? You could. Right? Make it even more hydrophobic if you extend this chain or branch this chain. Right? But then you would get a byproduct that is, albeit very, very small quantity, but a little bit more toxic than ethanol. So ethyl esters, you'll find, are the go-to ester motif for prodrugs like this. 
you'll see it in uh, drugs, you'll see it in supplementation too. Creatine epilepsy is really popular with athletes now. Same concept. It's absorbed better into the bloodstream of the cells where it's hydrolyzed back into creatine and a little bit of ethanol, which is fairly low toxicity byproduct they have to cope with. So it's a little bit more advanced example of how and why we use esters and esterifications in our hydrolysis because we can do some really, really neat tricks with biochemistry and medicine. Okay.